Dana, it's Barbie and Taylor Swift, right? That's, the, that's who's dominating the summer. Which retailers benefit? You're exactly right, Sarah, uh -huh. and thank you for having me. I think overall, nearly everybody is doing a collaboration with Barbie lately, and also the Taylor Swift concert. On average, we're hearing numbers like $1,300 for people going to Taylor Swift with the transportation, the restaurants, the hotels, and the ticket prices alone. When you think of which retailers will benefit, I think it's brands are benefiting. And some of the brands out there, you saw Ralph Lauren yesterday. I don't necessarily think they're the Taylor Swift beneficiary, but I think Ralph Lauren overall, what they've done with the business model. I think TJX is going to be a beneficiary this quarter, given the traffic that's going their way and given the value offering that they have. I also think you're going to continue to see athleisure work, and Lululemon dominates that, where they're beginning to see a more holistic offering that is driving demand. And then watch for the return of Abercrombie. Abercrombie's core brand of Abercrombie has been working. There's been some secular improvement in Hollister that I think we're going to continue to see as that's a path for 2024 and beyond. The stock's been really strong. Fran Harwitz has put, put together some really nice quarterly beats. Mike, I have another question for you on Tapestry because I think you like the stock. Had it a buy? Do you feel yep. any differently after the big acquisition announced yesterday? Let, let's call it what it is. It raises the risk profile. When you're doing an acquisition like that and taking on the debt you are, it adds a risk profile to the story. I think the $5 in earnings that Tapestry laid out last September at their investor day for 2025 is still intact. I think what gave them the confidence to do it is the fact that the eight, nearly $800 million in cash flow that Capri generated last year in a murky year gives them the confidence to pay down that debt so they get that leverage from four times to under two and a half times in a two-year type of time period. It's going to be the Michael Kors brand that's really the key to making improvements. And the management team that was there during Kate Spade is a different team there now. I think the data science they'll put in place and the emphasis on DTC while ratcheting down their wholesale exposure should help with margins. But this is not immediate. It certainly takes time. And I think managing the core coach brand and the tapestry business while integrating this is certainly a heavy lift, but one that a Scott Rowe as the CFO, Joanne Crossere as the CEO, I think they're up to the task. And the price that they paid, we've seen brands go for much higher multiples, but it raises the risk profile of the story as of now. And Dana, I mean, are you bullish in general on the potential for the concept of this portfolio of brands given the way that, you know, distribution channels are operating right now, do you feel as if that th those brands actually have uh, a hold on today's customers? I'm just wondering if, if this is kind of more of a, uh, of a compromise type of combination uh, as opposed to one that can be restarted as growth. So I think two things. I think, number one, I think they're buying it where they see it as a period of weakness. I think they're buying it when they see the Michael Kors brand stumbling. I think that can it be growth? Yes, it can reaccelerate. And I think it can be a growth business, but not super juggernaut growth. I think it allows them to be a market share leader and to get better margins. I think the margin opportunity, I think there's more margin clarity than what we can see on top line. And it's dollars that go to the bank. And really quickly, Dana, just on your point about, about profit margins, you see the, the tailwinds. You see this as a, be a benefit, the fact that we're seeing lower inflation, for instance, costs, lower inventory levels, because some people worry about the, the, that that'll pressure margins because retailers won't have as, as good pricing power, and they have benefited from keeping, keeping merchandise at full price. I think one of the things I'm seeing for this year, I have less certainty in top line and where the direction of top line is going, because I've even seen consumers at some of the higher end levels moderate their spend or curate their spend to other categories. I think there's more opportunity on the margin side because of lapping, lapping raw material cost pressures, lapping some of the freight cha changes and the lower inventory levels can help you manage your pricing. So you're going to be promotional, but maybe not as promotional as you had to be if you had higher inventory. Dana, great. It, it, good to preview this with you. Good to pregame retail earnings. As always, Dana Telsey.